Welcome again. Right now we are at John chapter 5, verses 15 through 30. The authority of Jesus, or Jesus' authority, okay? Now, don't forget, we just came from the previous, uh, the previous session, and that is when Jesus was at the pool uh, near Bethesda, and he saw the man that was crippled for decades, and he just all, just all of a sudden just said to him, Arise, take up your mat, and walk. And the man was instantly healed, and that was the Sabbath day. And you see, the Jews didn't have very much good to say about that. So we're just coming from that story. We're coming right into this. Let's start verse 15. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this cause, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he did these things on the Sabbath. Now, I've said this in the last session, and I think it's, I think it's good for me to say this again. Now, Jesus did not break the Sabbath at all, okay? He obeyed the law of God completely. He did not ever tell anybody to break the law, the law of God either. He told people to obey the law of God. Otherwise, he would be a proponent of sin. Okay, sin, according to 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 4, sin is transgression of the law. You break the law of God, you sin. Okay, so Jesus, if he broke the Sabbath... That means that he sinned. And if he sinned, that means he's stained. He's not the perfect spotless lamb. It means that he's a sinner and not a savior. Okay? So no, Jesus did not break the Sabbath in any way. Not even close to it. The problem lies with the Jews that misinterpreted, or what I, my own word is overinterpreted, the law of God in saying that Jesus broke the Sabbath when he really didn't, okay? You need, you need to understand, this is what the Jews didn't understand either, that in the Torah, not everything is always black and white, okay? There are these areas that it's not just black and white, okay? There are exceptions to the rule. There are different, you know, circumstances that's involved in, in, a, in a lot of different things, okay? And the Sabbath is one of them. Jesus made that very clear when he went actually through the grain fields and, um, and he was picking grain on the Sabbath. Now, you know, they tried to get him on that as well. He said, well, wait a second. Even the priests desecrate the Sabbath and is not guilty. David, with his men, he went in and he ate what was not lawful, you know? And so Jesus' point was this, again, there are exceptions to the rule. And here's an exception to the rule. The man was sick. The man was, was actually, the man was crippled. Would it have been better for Jesus to say, okay, be crippled for another day? Be crippled for another, you know, I'm not going to come through here again for another, you know, uh, several weeks. So stay crippled. No, he knew that was the time to heal him. And he shouldn't just leave his mat right there. He should take up his mat and, 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 you know, be responsible for his own possessions, you know, even though it's a Sabbath. So there are different, there are different, um, you know, exceptions. There are different, there are different things about the whole Sabbath rule. Okay. Jesus understood that the Jews didn't. They tried to get him on that. So they persecuted Jesus because they thought that Jesus was sinning or that he broke the law. He broke God's law. Same way it is today with a lot of people. They would try to point at, you know, people saying, well, you have, you know, you've, uh, you, you're a sinner, you know, but they don't understand God's ways. They don't, they don't understand God's law at all. A lot of times they would point at someone and say, you're a sinner, or they would accuse somebody of being a sinner when they're really not a sinner and vice versa. A lot of times they think that they're okay with God when that they're not okay with God at all. But here again, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him. Verse 17, but Jesus answered them, my father is still working, so I am working too. For this cause, therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also called God his own father, making himself equal with God. Wow, what 
an amazing precept here, okay? So the Jews realized that because Jesus called God his Father, he made himself equal with God. Put it this way. If a human is your father, it makes you a human. If a cat is your father, that makes you a cat. Whatever is your parents, whatever you came from, the, is, is really, you're, you're equal with them, okay? You came from a human, you are equal with a human. You came from a cat, you're equal with a cat. You came from a dog, you're equal with a dog, okay? So you came from God, you're, you are, God is your father. That makes you equal with God. That gives you the same nature as God because you are descendant of God. Okay, the Jews understood that, and that's what that's why they were so angry with him by calling God his Father. So, Jesus here, you know, he basically killed two two birds with one stone. Here, first of all, he said God was his, was his Father, and also, according to the man's interpretation of the of the law, he broke the Sabbath, which obviously is not true. He did not break the Sabbath, but he did call God his Father. So let's continue. Verse 19, Jesus therefore answered them, most certainly I tell you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father doing. For whatever things he does, these the Son also does likewise. In other words, what the Son does is what the Father does. What the Father does is what the Son does. Like Father, like Son. For the Father has affection for the Son and shows him all things that he, that he himself does. He will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives life to whom he desires. For the Father judges no one, but he has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He who doesn't honor the Son doesn't honor the Father who sent him. Most certainly I tell you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Again, don't don't uh, don't forget the word believes here in the original Greek is pretty much synonymous with the word obey. Okay, you can't believe in a rabbi without actually obeying what that rabbi says. If you don't obey the rabbi, you can't say you believe in him. Okay, just doesn't <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. So once again, most certainly I tell you, he who hears my word and believes him, obeys him who sent me, has eternal life and doesn't come into judgment. Well, that makes sense. If you obey, you don't come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Most certainly, I tell you, the hour comes and now is when the dead will hear the Son of God's voice and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave to the Son also to have life in himself. He also gave him authority to execute judgment because he is a son of man. Notice here that it says because he is a son of man. So the fact that Jesus is a human, okay, is the reason why God gives him authority to judge. Okay, it's like if you have a judge that has never walked in the shoes, so to speak, of those whom they judge, then that judge is not going to be a very good judge. Therefore, God made sure that Jesus was a human, 100% human, okay, uh, as well as having the nature of God, being the Son of God. He has the nature of God. So he made sure he was a human so that he would have the authority to judge so that he would know and have the wisdom and experience of a human to judge humans. Don't marvel at this, for the hour comes in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come out. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. 
I advise every every one of you to read my article on on cremation. Okay. Now Jesus said, "All who are in the tombs." Okay. The idea is to save the body or preserve the body as much as possible, you know, without defiling the body. You're looking ahead in the future for the resurrection of the righteous, okay? Now, because you're looking ahead in the future for resurrection, you want to do as much as possible to save or to preserve that body, you know, for resurrection. You don't want to destroy it. That works against the whole idea of resurrection. Okay, that just works. It works against it. You know, it's like it's like uh, it's like saying, "Oh, I want to be healed," but you make yourself sick. You know, you don't go the opposite way. You want to be included in the resurrection of the righteous. You don't make yourself. You don't burn yourself up. You know, when at least, especially when you have the option to. Uh, to preserve the body for that resurrection. Verse 30, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I don't seek my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. Now, some of you might kind of, it might kind of fly over your head where, where the whole phrase, because my judgment is righteous. And what does that mean, my judgment is righteous? What that means is, simply stated, you know, because I judge rightly, okay? Uh, my judgment is right. You know, I, I'm not wrong in my judgment. That's basically what it means. If your judgment is righteous, your judgment is right. Right is actually just a short form of righteous. So if your judgment is righteous, your judgment's right. Uh, if your judgment is wrong, your judgment is wicked, then, you, you know, your judgment is certainly not righteous. So Jesus wrapped it up by saying, because I don't seek my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. See, a lot of people today are very selfish. They're, they are they are raised in an environment where it's like only them. It's like they get all they want. It's like they, you know, it's just their will. What do you want as a child? Is That's what you get. That is a wrong, wrong, wrong way of looking at it. That's the wrong way of raising children. To so raise children to say, not my will, but the will of God. Not my will. I don't want to serve myself. I want to serve others. Okay? And as it says in Leviticus chapter 19, you know, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You should not suffer him to sin. In other words, rebuke him. If your neighbor sins, if you really love him, you you will rebuke him. Okay, a lot of people think that rebuke is hate. Not at all. Yeah, rebuke is hate of sin, not hate of the person, because if you, if you get rebuked, that's an actual that's actually an act of love. Okay, people don't know that because they today's culture, the way people are raised today, the way children are raised today, they don't even know what love is. Okay, love to them is just some sensual feeling or something like that. I mean, it's just, they don't even know what love is. Love is denying yourself and serving others. Number one, serving God, but then, you know, out of that, serving others. So there you have it. Jesus' authority. Jesus has authority because he is the son of God. He makes made himself equal with God in that he said he's the son of God, he came from God, therefore he has the nature of God, but yet also he used the term son of man there too, meaning also that he is a human. He is as human as human can get as well, okay? He's human, yet he is the son of God, okay? So that is really a good part of the gospel right there. You know, Jesus is human, Yet he is the Son of God. He is born of God. Therefore, he does not sin. And that's why it says so much against sin in the Scriptures. And that's why the Scriptures, and that's why God commands you to stop sinning and, and to repent of your sin as well. So, as you go your way, just position yourself before God in humility. Position yourself in humility, seeking his face. Get desperate for him. Be thirsty and you will be 
filled, okay? As Jesus said, blessed are those who thirst. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you will be filled. You will be filled. As you hunger and thirst for righteousness, that means hunger and thirst for doing what's right according to the scriptures in God's eyes, okay? Not in the eyes of man, not in the eyes of the government, not in the eyes of your friends, not in the eyes of your even your own family, but in the eyes of God. Do what's right in the eyes of God. How do I, you know, how do I know what's right in the eyes of God? It's all there in the scriptures. Read the scriptures and don't just read it. Obey it. Thanks again for listening and God bless you. May God enlighten your eyes and give you great revelation and bless you abundantly as you seek his face. Amen.